Hi, I'm Priyai, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. This is when we look at all the cool new products that are being introduced. Over on DigiKey, this is Nixperia. Lady Ada, what is Nixperia? Nixperia is a new name for the NXP uh, family of chips. I think they kind of tweaked their name a little bit and also tweaked mm -hmm. their logo. Uh, so it caught me unawares. Um, but this week's IMPI is the NEH2000. BY available in a QFN 16, and you can see that fancy new logo on the top of the uh, chip render. This is an uh, MPPT, uh, a low cost, no inductor MPPT controller for solar panels to charge batteries for wearables or other small devices out in the field. It's an energy harvesting PMIC, um, but it really is designed best for uh, photovoltaic, otherwise known as solar cells. Um, so what's really cute about this chip is it's very inexpensive um, and it's very small, but it still has max power point tracking for solar cells. You can use pretty much like a three volt solar cell, so a, a good place to start. Um, and it's used for charging batteries. You can run electronics off of it. It's just designed to be very small, very low cost, very simple to use, um, but with the power and um, efficiency of max power point tracking. So the sun. This is a photo from NASA, very cool solar flare image. Um, you know what gets power from the sun? Superman and <laughs> the NEH2000PY. Uh, so you want to have a product that is powered by the sun or perhaps something that can charge you over USB, but you want to, you know, it's outside because it's agricultural, it's a wearable, or it's uh, some sort of um, environmental monitor. It already has sunlight access. And so adding a low cost solar cell, I mean, solar cells are very cheap. They're on the order of like, you know, pennies or a couple dozens of cents. And you add this chip, which is about a dollar. Um, and before you know it, you can extend the battery life by trickle charging a battery uh, in between <clears throat> bigger scale charges. Or maybe if you are efficient enough, you can run your entire project off of the sun. Um, so the issue with solar cells, I've used this image, it's a, a great picture from Wikipedia, is that Solar cells have, you know, this is, um, each cell has about 0.5 volts of open circuit voltage. That's like kind of the, the, where all the colorful lines drop off, 0.5. And depending on how bright it is, the amount of current you can draw until you hit that cliff varies. So this is, you know, a one cell that can provide up to, you know, 40 milliamps max, um, this so 0.04 amps max, that's the red line. Um, but once you hit that 0.4 voltage, and you see it kind of ranges at the lower uh, at the lower current outputs, like dimmer sun, you get maybe 0.35 um, volts before the cliff. And then as it gets brighter, you get closer to maybe 4.45 volts before you hit the cliff. But that, trying to find the maximum point, that point right before the voltage collapses, um, and trying to keep your charger operating at that rate is very difficult because things that plug into the wall usually don't, they, you know, you'll, you will hit a certain limit, but you'll get a much more gradual voltage drop. And so it's a lot easier to stay within the functioning range. But also at light changes throughout the day, that voltage point will vary as well. So you have to constantly be adjusting. So it's from the video. And they're showing like, you know, the traditional solution is you just set a fixed voltage and you say, okay, 0.3 volts. That's the, the, what I'm assuming you want to get from the sunlight, but you don't get the maximum amount of power. If you want to get another 10, 20% or more, you really need a max power point solution. Uh, so that's what this does. And it's very simple. Um, VN is just connected to your solar cell. Um, and you get the MPT controller, and then you just connect the battery output. Um, you have a couple GPIO. VREF is for the charge booster, which I'll discuss in a moment. Disable turns it off, which is very useful if you're doing over voltage or over current protection, you want to quickly turn it off. And SysReady just lets you know whether um, you know, there's enough power to, to run whatever device you want to have trickle charged off of the NEH2000BY. Uh, um, this is the uh, typical application. So you'll notice um, we've covered other MPPT chargers and a lot of them use inductors for buck or boost conversion this one doesn't um they don't really mention what is inside of it but they sort of mention it's like a doubler so it's probably a charge cap um, a switch cap converter um, so the input 
voltage from the cell is doubled uh, and then regulated out to VBAT. Sorry, not regulated out to VBAT. So you may have to uh, do some regulation on VBAT if you have to keep it under a certain voltage. Um, to, you know, there's a bit of math in the data sheet, so I won't go through, but basically you want to make sure because it's, a, it's even though it's boosting two times, it's still a linear converter in a sense. So you want to make sure that your you have enough solar cells in series to be high enough to have a little bit of voltage drop over the battery voltage, right? Because if you are, say, charging up a light poly battery, it is usually about 3.7 volts, but it'll go up to 4.2. That means you need to have 4.5 volts on the VBAT output. So you can have like a little headroom maybe for a voltage regulator or, or charge controller. Um, reduce the doubler, reduce the inefficiencies, etc. Basically, your VOC of your solar cell should be about 0.7 times the maximum V battery. So turns out if your V battery is uh, 4.2 volts, your VOC is going to be 3 volts, which is a very common low cost uh, solar cell. It's about um, six cells in a row. Um, but the trade-off is, is that there's no protection on the output. Um, it will you know, charge the battery and the VBAT will sink a little bit as it's charging, but eventually your battery will be full. You want to make sure that that VBAT doesn't keep going, it doesn't try to charge the battery past 4.2 volts into 4.5 volts, in which case, again, you might want to either use uh, some sort of regulator or charge controller, or you can use a low-cost over-voltage protector when the VDD, the VBAT, hits 4.2 volts or whatever, um, it turns off the disable pin and it shuts off and then will turn back on once the VBAT drops below 4.2 or 4.1 or whatever. So you'll have some hysteresis. Um, you'll keep your battery charged, but it won't overcharge it. OVP, charge controller, it's up to you. You know, you probably have a charge controller already in your design. Uh, you might feed this through a diode into your charge controller and they can share um, the charging state and um, protection with uh, the USB charger you've got. Build on Digicade. It's in stock, lots of them. And you'll note, you know, basically the, the trade off of having an inductorless design is it's a lot smaller, um, less noisy, less prone to vibration issues because you don't have to worry about the inductor breaking. It's also a lot cheaper yep. and easier to manufacture because it's a QFN. All right, we got a video. And then on the other side, we'll uh, do some new products. That's Iron Pierre this week. Energy harvesting allows ambient energy generated by light or movement to be captured so it can be used to power devices. Nexperia Energy Harvesting takes this a step further by using a unique ultra-fast maximum power point tracking or MPPT to maximize power extraction under changing conditions. What makes energy harvesting difficult is that we do not control the power source. As such, the power input is frequently changing. Imagine a solar-powered smartwatch on your wrist. If you move your hand, the light exposure to the solar panel changes. In order to collect as much energy as possible, the Power Management IC, or PMIC, designed for low-power devices, needs to continuously adapt to these changes. In traditional power management, the peak efficiency is the most important aspect. With energy harvesting, the average efficiency throughout the day is key. This is determined by how well the chip can adapt to its changing environment. Traditional solutions are unable to adapt to a changing environment. The advantage of Nexperia's MPPT is that our energy harvesting PMIC measures its own power outputs. Every second it checks all possible options, instantly finding the best setting that will maximize the amount of power collected. When more energy is collected, this means fewer batteries will be needed for low-power IoT, making Nexperia Energy Harvesting an environmentally friendly solution that can contribute to a sustainable future for electronics. Nexperia. Efficiency wins. Hi, I'm MPI.